so thank you. And so I'm Charles, and I will be talking about building a visual understanding pipeline using a modern deep learning techniques. So first, a bit of context. I'm a co-founder of a startup called uh, Euritech, who is building uh, powerful image and text recognition technologies. And nowadays, we are uh, using that on the uh, vertical of fashion. So throughout the talk, I will be ex uh, talking about fashion, but this virtually applies to any kind of uh, image domain. And we've even applied it to uh, agriculture for uh, detecting species of plants, for instance. So here's the goal. You have images, really images in the wild could be anything. And you want to detect on these images the different products, the different objects, here the clothes, the accessories, and to characterize them at scale. So here we would like to know that there's a Chanel bag that is red, there's, there's a, the top is striped, uh, has a certain style, etc. And it could be really any kind of pictures. And this is uh, the great difficulty that I will try to tackle in this talk. It could be any uh, picture from uh, uh, multiple shots, maybe angles in the pictures, maybe totally black pictures unrelated, maybe uh, occlusions, which means part of the objects have uh, been occluded and, and do not appear, or very low quality, different scales, plenty of uh, problems. And this is the main reason why we will be using deep learning. So I will be talking about a few of the algorithms uh, we will be using in our uh, pipeline. Uh, and let me detail them. A few of them have already been a bit presented, so I'll go a bit fast on, on it. So this is the canonical example of uh, deep learning for image tagging. This is a network called VGG, uh, a convolutional neural network that takes as input images and outputs a class. It's one class among a uh, thousand possible. That could be the cars, the street, a dog, etc., etc. So how it works is that we train it using millions of images, images as input and the corresponding label that we know, and we update the weights of the, net the network in order to then be a have a network that is able to generalize to new images that we've never seen. So using that technique, we can already uh, have a good models for uh, my fashion problem. So here I could be tagging, for instance, e-commerce uh, images, detecting the colors, whether it's a uh, top or uh, pants, the patterns, the styles, etc. For instance, here, the, the pattern floral, uh, you could see that there's plenty of different kinds of flowers on uh, clothes, but we are able to accurately detect uh, the, the even flowers that we've never seen before. So this is done through uh, a classic uh, convolutional uh, deep learning methods. But here we haven't tackled the real problem. The real problem is that if we have images on the wild, by that I mean from anywhere on the web, we won't have these very uh, uh, clear pictures with just a single object that is at the center of the image with a white background, easy. We will have much more difficulties. And so we will need better tools. Here I described classification. When you classify and output the bounding box uh, around the object that you've local localized in the image. It's called localization. And you can go further by detecting every single object in the image, even if the object is very small. And the last case is called instance segmentation, where you have to uh, identify the binary mask of uh, the pixels that belong to the object and to differentiate it with other masks and with the, with the background. So let me detail first localization. But to do so, we will be using transfer learning. You've heard transfer learning quite a few times already today. The basically, transfer learning is taking a neural network that was already trained for a uh, given task and reusing it for other tasks. So we've used transfer learning for new classification tasks. This is what, what here uh, the on top. But we can also use it uh, for new tasks, so a task of uh, localization, for instance, we will not only input the class, but we will also want to input the um, coordinates of a bounding box. And you could do the same for segmentation. So for the localization, the input really is one image, and the output is a class and a bounding box. You could think of the bounding box as four coordinates. 
the, being the x and y of the center, and the width and height of the box. And you, what we will do is take our uh, neural network, it could be the VGG I showed uh, before, but it could be any uh, neural network, and have it uh, give it two heads, the one that will output the class and one that will output this uh, bounding boxes. To do so, you need more training data, more specific training data. You also need to give the network the bounding boxes. And so for that, you will need some human labeling, which can be quite tedious. This uh, algorithm here is called Faster uh, RCNN from 2015. It's a quite powerful one because you can use it almost in real time, I'd say at 5 FPS, not really real time. And it can really accurately detect uh, objects uh, at different scales. Here you can see it detects a human on the first uh, picture, and uh, on the background it also detects another human. So this is much more advanced than just saying there's a human in the picture globally. When going towards segmentation, we, it's an uh, even more challenging task that requires even more challenging data. Because we will need to have the exact masks. And it's not about uh, drawing a bounding box around the object, it's really then detouring exactly the, the object and getting to know which pixels are from this object. So it's, it's much more difficult to get the data, and you need some new architectures to, to build the network. But globally, it's exactly the same principle. You have as, a, as an input an image, and a different kind of input, this time segmentation mass. And finally, there's very recently, uh, a few months ago, there was this article called Mask RCNN, which merges uh, both of them and has three heads. One for the classification, one for the bounding boxes, and one for the segmentation mask. I'm showing you this one because it's one that gives impressive results. You can, you can see some of them here. It's on unseen images. It means the network has never seen these images and it's able to output the corresponding uh, masks of segmentation. So for instance, here you have the horses on the second picture. Even though they are behind the fence, the network is able to accurately detour the objects. So we will be using all of these techniques in our own pipeline. So let me show you um, the, the way we implemented that Eurotech. So we have this pipeline here. And you have to think of each of the blue uh, box here is a deep neural network. It could be a classification network, or it could be a localization or segmentation network. And we will be using this cascade of uh, networks. So first of all, you have to think uh, each of these networks, we have trained them. It's, it's, this is not training, this is inference. Each of them we have trained separately, tested separately, and now that we have all of these, we can plug them together and build the pipeline. So it goes like this. You start from the image on the left. You first identify some of the context, whether there's a human or it's in the street here. And this is a critical part, because if you don't uh, filter out the uh, useless images uh, very quickly, you will uh, find out that uh, your algorithms afterwards will have a lot of false positive. So you have to filter out as much as you can the images that are useless. Then we have the object detection uh, network. So this is a localization network. We'll output each of the different clothes of the person. You could think of any anything else for another uh, uh, project. And we will refine that with segmentation, outputting the exact mask here, for instance, on the bag. Uh, this uh, segmentation will help us tremendously to identify the color, for instance, because if we have the exact mask of the, the object, we will be able to uh, know the color without having the background interfering in our color detection. Once we have the segmentation and the localization of each object, what we will do is have different classifiers that were trained of this style of images, so on just one object, to recognize the style, the patterns, the attributes, and even to classify very specifically uh, the different uh, brand and model, we can even go to the, to the model of the handbag. So to build that, uh, what we use is uh, different frameworks. There's plenty of frameworks. Every year, there's a new best framework. So you don't know how to, to deal with, uh, with that. It's quite complicated. But it's not really a problem once you've uh, built a, an easy architecture and where each of this module here is contained in its Docker. 
and has uh, been connected with the with the good drivers to to be able to to connect through to the GPU. Then you can you could have some models in PyTorch and then the segmentation model maybe in Keras, etc. Having said that, we try mostly to stay on TensorFlow and Keras. Keras being the high-level API, which is very uh, uh, good for fast prototyping, and TensorFlow has uh, more flexibility to design complex models. And one last thing, if when dealing with images like that, you definitely need GPUs for training. You cannot try to do it on, uh, on CPUs. But for uh, inference, then depending on, on your problems, on the latency that you will have, on the volumes, you can use both CPUs and GPUs. It, it both can be, can be fine. You can compress some networks so that it's fast enough on CPUs. And for the models, uh, previous talk I've been talking about it, but don't start from scratch. Use architectures that are already existing. They are very well designed to work on natural images, so you won't need to build your own architecture, just take a ResNet or Inception. Personally, I use re more ResNets. Uh, and from that, you may modify it a little bit, but don't try to build the, the whole architecture. And as, uh, as we mentioned also before, using pre-trained models uh, that can be found on the internet is also very, a very nice way to start. Then you might want to fine-tune them to get some, some better results. If you want to fine-tune them, you will need require quite a lot of data. Um, the my rules are like between 100 and 1,000 images uh, per class and a bit less for segmentation and localization if you don't care on uh, having a not so precise, uh, pixel precise uh, segmentation. Um, so then I would like to show you a bit of, of frontiers, some recent selected research of uh, deep learning that will help us uh, be better at this uh, pipeline. So one uh, we've recently worked with is called domain adaptation. So what, uh, what is a domain and what are domain problems? Here, for instance, in fashion, I have two domains. One would be the e-commerce with very easy pictures with white background, and one would be the worn clothes with any kind of background occlusions and difficulties. With e-commerce, I can even get some labeled data very easily because I can just crawl some uh, Amazon or whatever and get a lot of, uh, of good data. On the worn clothes, I will never get any data. So what we would like to do is build some of our models on the e-commerce only source, which is the, the top line, have a procedure to adapt this model to the worn clothes, clothes so that the new adapted model also works uh, good on one closes, even though we don't have labeled data on one closes, and we might have much less data. To do so, there's one method. I will not uh, go into the details, but um, it's called uh, adversarial domain adaptation. It w it's quite recent, has uh, two years old now. And basically, you take your uh, your network. There's the the green part which is the, the feature extractor, and the blue part, which is a, a classic deep learning model. And the red part here will be a classifier for the domain. We just classify, is it e-commerce or is it worn? And what we will try to do is learn to classify the, the, uh, any, uh, for your task, any task, with the blue and, uh, and green one. And with the green one, learn to not classify correctly the domain. If you learn to not classify correctly, it will merge the representations uh, that come from the e-commerce and the representation that come from the worn clothes and have these uh, two domains much closer and so that they uh, generalize better when going from one to the other. Last, I want to mention uh, uh, an article I really like, which is uh, related to, r to generative design. Generative design is the contrary of uh, discriminative networks I showed. Instead of starting from an image and going towards labels or boxes, you start from labels or maybe just random noise, and you want to hallucinate an image. And uh, this hallucination, you can think of it a bit like uh, uh, the Google Deep Dream, for instance. And here, what they did on this paper is take uh, images uh, from handbags from Amazon and have the network reconstruct the handbag, try to reconstruct the handbag from a sketch. After the training, they asked some people to draw uh, some handbags 
my, I, my guess is uh, that it's uh, children. Uh, it's on the right here. And you can see that uh, it generated some the new trendy bags uh, just from these uh, early sketches. So you, you can see that uh, this kind of generative design is going to be huge. Nowadays, it's, it's uh, a bit uh, sketchy yet. Um, but it's also useful for generating images for your data set. So some people have been using these techniques for creating data sets that are really more likely than uh, generated data sets. So it's actually uh, very useful. Um, so what I want to, to do is to, to sum up. Um, we've seen that nowadays we can build some very good uh, and reliable architectures that start from any image on the web, uh, classify them, localize the different objects, even identify the precise zones uh, in in which correspond to these objects. And with the recent uh, developments, it's now possible to, to build such pipelines. However, if you want to build this pipeline yourself, uh, the, by the time you put it in production, the research goes so fast that you might be already much uh, behind and lagging with the new model that is twice as powerful. So it's, it's a good idea to, to keep uh, a foot into uh, the research and while developing that. With that, um, I thank you and yes.